going to have a look at, um, I think they're pronounced Veronoi diagrams. Uh, these have just been added to the new IB syllabus for like applications. Um, it's not much on the internet, so I thought I'd make a quick video uh, just going through some questions. Um, so first off, uh, Veronoi diagrams, basically this idea that if, if you're stood at a certain point, um, like which of these like black dots is closest to you. So basically anything in this green area here, you're closest to this black dot. Anything in this pink area here, you're closest to this black dot. Anything in this blue area, you're closest to this one, and so on. So the idea is that they can like uh, easily show you kind of where is your closest thing. So you know, they can be used for kind of hospitals or you know food stalls or whatever really. But it, it's it's a way of re representing data. Uh, and here we go, this is the chap who invented it, um, Mr. Voronoi, uh, Russian mathematician. Okay, so let's have a look at how these questions can be asked. Um, uh, here's the first one. So we've got an area enclosed by the region. So we've basically got this square, you know, uh, 8 by 8 square. And we've got three hospitals. Hospital is one of them's here, hospital at B, and the hospital at C. Um, and the idea is that wh wherever you're taken ill, uh, the ambulance has to decide where's the, the quickest uh, the quickest hospital to get to, again assuming that don't worry about roads and things like that, but just the, the, the shortest distance um, to which of those hospitals. Um, and the way we do this is basically using perpendicular bisectors. So here we go, so I've looked at there's A and there's B, and I've drawn the perpendicular bisector between A and B. That means it's exactly halfway um, between points A and B and anywhere on that line is halfway. So if I'm on the left hand side then I should go to hospital A and if I'm on the right hand side I go to hospital B. And then obviously uh, I do the same sort of thing with, with hospital C as well. So now I go right well let's do the perpendicular bisector for between hospital A and hospital C. So it's this blue line here and again if I was on this side of it I'd go to hospital A. If I go on this side of it I'd go to hospital C. And then I do the same thing again and draw the perpendicular bisector for uh, between C and B. And then that gives me the green line here. So now I've got three perpendicular bisectors. And the general idea is now to kind of just stand in each region and then try and work out which of those points is closer to where you want to go to. So for example, uh, if I'm in this region A, well, I can definitely see that I'm closer to point A than any other point B or point C, so I'll shade that in red. If I'm in this bit here, again I can see that I'm closer to A than B because I'm on this side of the perpendicular bisector. I'm closer to A than C because I'm on this side of the perpendicular bisector. Therefore I can colour that in red as well. Choose another region. How about this region here? Again you can see that I'm definitely closer to C than anything else. Let's colour that one in green. How about this region? Yeah, you can still see that you're closer to C than to B because you're on this side of the perpendicular bisector and equally you're on this side relative to A. So again, it's going to be green. Then you look at this one, same sort of idea. This time you're on the opposite side of the perpendicular bisector. You're closer to B and you're, again, you're the wrong side of this one to get to A. So therefore it's going to be blue and then and so on and so on. So you kind of... You choose a region and then just trying to work out which which point is closest to you from that region. And then I've just kind of filled in. So once you've done the, the difficult bit, obviously the rest, again here, you can see that's going to have to be red. Like all of this bit here is going to have to be green. All of this is closer to C than anything else. And then again, just filled in this bit here. This must be closer to blue, you know, the, the B than anything else. So colour that in blue. Okay. So you get this kind of general uh, general pattern, uh, and this is basically a Voronoi diagram. Um, and you might have noticed as well that, that all the perpendicular bisectors will meet in a point. And, and this sort of question would be asked, like, you know, so if, if you wanted to build a new hospital and you wanted it to be uh, as far away as possible from all the other hospitals, well, all you need to do is just find out where the perpendicular bisectors meet, and then that gives you the, the answer to this one. So there we go, so we should build a new hospital at this point D here. Okay, so let's actually look at uh, a specimen exam question. 
Um, so here we go, we've got some points. Um, they're snow shelters in a national forest. And there we go, we've been given the, the coordinates, given the grid. First bit nice and easy, gradient of the line segment AE. So we basically look at the distance across, which is four, distance up is two. We could use this formula here, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, if you've been taught that, that's reasonable as well. Um, and anyway, whichever method I use, I should get 2 divided by 4, 2 divided by 4, or 1 over 2, and it's we're going up, so therefore it's positive gradient. So there we go, I've got the gradient of the line segment AE. Uh, the next bit says, um, find the equation of the line which will complete the Voronoi uh, cell containing the site E. If you look at what they've drawn here, basically they've they've already drawn the perpendicular bisector for AE, they've already drawn the perpendicular bisector for ED, they've already drawn the perpendicular bisector for BE. So basically the one that's missing is the perpendicular bisector for AE, and that kind of follows on from what we've just been doing. We, we'd already worked out that the gradient for, between A and E is a half, so the second step is to find the gradient of the perpendicular, so the the rule for this is to basically to flip the fraction and make it negative. In this case here, so if this is a half, the new gradient becomes minus 2 over 1, which is minus 2. So the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is minus 2. Uh, and then I have to find the midpoint. So I look at the point uh, A and the point E. Halfway between the x coordinates, halfway between 3 and 7, is going to be 5. Halfway between 1 and 3, it's going to be 2, so that's the midpoint halfway between A and E. I then use the formula for equation of straight line, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, stick in all those values. My y coordinate was 2, my x coordinate is 5, and the gradient is minus 2. And then I rearrange that into the form that they want. They told me I wanted it in this form, ax plus b by plus d equals 0. So there we go, 2x plus y minus 12 equals 0. Uh, and then part C in the question just says, in the context, uh, explain the significance of this cell containing E. Basically, remember, these were representing snow shelters. So basically, if you are in this region here, then you are closest to the snow shelter at E than any other sh snow shelter. Okay, so let's have a look at another couple of questions. Uh, here's another one. Uh, again, we've got some towns, uh, and we've got, sorry, we've got a town, and we've got three schools. So we go to school A, school B, and school C. Um, and again, just to show you kind of how you kind of progress with the question on this, again, I've done some perpendicular bisectors. So I did the perpendicular bisector of A and C. That's the red line here. Perpendicular bisector of A and B. That's the green line. And then perpendicular bisector of B and C, that's the blue line. Again, if you're trying to shade this in, again, just try and work out, just choose a region, like for example, region A. Again, this is pretty easy to see, like you're clearly closer to A than anywhere else, so we shade that in red, for example. If we choose this region here, again, we can see that we're this side, the left-hand side of this perpendicular bisector, so we're definitely closer to A than C, and also we're the left hand side of this perpendicular bisector so we're closer to A than B therefore again we shade it in in red again so again we just choose a region and then just basically work out which one are we closest to so then I've shaded in my regions um, and then the next part of the question might be something like this uh, okay they need to draw uh, need to make a new school it needs to be as close as possible to a point which is furthest from all three existing schools. So again, we, we do the same thing. We basically, we've drawn our three perpendicular bisectors. We find where do they intersect? They intersect at this point here. So there we go. So my new school should be built at this point here, 3.7, 2.5. That is the furthest distance from the three existing schools. Okay, and let's look at one last question. Um, same sort of idea. We've got three hamburger stands. Uh, we've got a fairground rye, a fairground place in, in the shape of a rectangle. We've got dimensions 100 by 50. And then we've got uh, some burger stands at A, B, and C. Um, first off, it says find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of A and C. So I, I run through the same sort of idea. Step number one is to find 
uh, the gradient. So I've got uh, up by 20, across by 20, but I'm sloping downwards, so it's going to be negative. Negative 20 over 20 is negative 1. So that's the gradient of this line. And then I find the gradient of the perpendicular. So that's going to be minus 1 over minus 1, which gives me 1. My next step is to find the midpoint, what's halfway in the x-coordinates between 20 and 40, that's going to be 30. What's halfway between 10 and 30, that's 20, so that's the midpoint. Then I use my formula y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Okay, so I get this equation here. So y minus 20 equals 1, x minus 30, and there we go. Simplify that out, y equals x minus 10. So there we go, that's the uh, equation of the perpendicular bisector for AC. Okay, next one for BC, do exactly the same. There's my lines. Uh, I've gone across by 40, up by 20. So I do 20 divided by 40. This time I'm sloping upwards, so therefore it's positive, and that gives me gradient a half. Therefore, the perpendicular is going to be minus, basically flip the fraction, to minus 2 over 1, which is minus 2. The midpoint, halfway between 40 and 80 is 60. Halfway between 10 and 30 is 20. Stick it into my formula. There's my y-coordinate. There's my x-coordinate. y minus 20 equals minus 2 bracket x minus 60. Again, there we go. Simplify it out. y equals minus 2x plus 140. Okay, and then uh, I did the, the same, you basically could do the same thing for, for the other one. Um, so there we go, that, those are the two perpendicular bisector equations we'd find. We could also find the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and B, and then draw it in here. And then, same as before, you can actually work out um, which region, you know, you stand in this region here, I'm closer to C than anywhere else, let's shade it in yellow. I stand in this region here, I'm closer to C than anything else. I do the same sort of thing each time. If I'm in this region, I'm closer to A than anything else. If I'm in this region, again, I'm, I'm closer to A. You know, I'm on this side of the perpendicular bisector, and so on. So you basically shade in your regions, something like that. Um, and then the last bit, it says the proportion of the fairground where people would go uh, for stand C. So if I look at this thing here, um, I mean I slightly changed the question. They, they, the initial question they gave us 100 by 50. Um, for this I think I, I, I slightly changed it so we're now now got an area of 80 meters by 50 meters. So this is, let's just say that's the area of our um, fairground. So we're, we're using this area here. Now stand C, now pretty much anyone who's in this yellow region here, is going to go into stand C. So basically we need to find the area of this yellow region and obviously the area of, of my fairground, which is 80 meters by 50 meters. Okay, so well, obviously the area of the field is going to be 50 by 80, which is going to be 4,000 meters. Now the area of the yellow section, well, we've gone across, there we go from 10 to 70, so across by 60. And then if you think we've gone up by 40, so that's the perpendicular height. That's my formula, half times base times perpendicular height, or half times 60 times 40, which is 1,200. So therefore, the proportion, well, basically, though anyone in that region, so 1,200 meters out of those 4,000 meters, which would be 3 out of 10, or 30%. So for this fairground, 30% of the people, uh, assuming people are kind of randomly distributed, would end up going to stand C.